Hi everybody, welcome back. This is going to be the last kind of lecture video in the series of economic valuation of natural resources. Uh, although there will be one more with a practical application of hedonic pricing in Microsoft Excel. Uh, where we're actually going to use hedonic pricing um, to evaluate how much people value air quality, um, basically the, the lack of pollution. Um, yeah, and so hedonic pricing, it's a very interesting, it's another revealed, revealed preference technique. So again, these are valuation techniques based on people's actual market behavior. So even though we might be talking about a non-market, non-priced good, like air quality or a national park or something like that, um, we can still examine people's market behaviors that are related to that good. Um, and so hedonic pricing, this is the use of statistical analysis to explain the price of a good or service as a function of several components. The use of statistical analysis to explain the price of a good or service as a function of several components. Okay, um, and, and so this, this could be used for non-environmental things. Um, this, this technique generally has broad application. Uh, and, and particularly for things that might be hard to measure that have non-market value, non-priced value. Um, but for the case of environmental goods, and actually many others, a very common use of hedonic pricing is looking at housing markets. And so what we're going to be thinking about here are, all right, we want to explain the price of a good, in this case housing. So let's do house price is a function of all sorts of different components. So for example, first is the number of rooms, right? And we're going to think about all these other options here. You could even break this down into how many bedrooms and how many bathrooms. Um, but I would, I would encourage you to pause the video and think about the other sorts of things that are going to help explain the value of a house. So what influences a house price? Um, and when you're ready to unpause it, I'll talk about a couple others here. So another one could be lot size or acreage if it's a big if it's a big lot. So how big is the piece of land that the house is on? Um, you could do the age of the house or even the style of the house. Um, all of these are going to affect the house price. What else is going to affect it? Maybe something like local school quality, crime rates, um, or maybe in other neighborhood traits. Right, so you might think about the, the average incomes in the neighborhood or the walkability of the neighborhood or the distance of the neighborhood to um, nightlife or, or other amenities, right? But uh, where the environment comes in 
is that it could also be a function of the surrounding air quality or natural recreational opportunities. Okay, so a lot of things are going to affect the value of a house. Hedonic pricing is essentially looking at the value of these houses and incorporating all of these different effects into place. So let's suppose these are two houses. This is house A. This is house B. And they could be in the same city. They could be in a different city. Um, I guess for, for the sake of this example, let's think of them as in different cities. But let's suppose that they have a, you know, a similar format of the house. You know, they have a, you know, the similar yard size and gardens. Um, they have the similar schools there are A plus schools, schools here are A plus schools, crime rates are low there, crime rates, crime rates are low in house B, um, you know, they're both, they're both 4,000 square feet, um, yeah, and uh, they, they both both of the cities that they live in have unemployment of 5%. So the labor markets are similar. Essentially, all of these uh, observable variables about the house, all of these things that are going to affect the value of the house, um, they're the same. Except in one place, the pollution is very high, and in one place, the pollution is very low. And this is the only observable difference in the house. And so essentially, what, what um, the gist of hedonic pricing is that you're going to have two cities these are, these are now cities, not houses. And they're going to be houses all over. And let's just say that some of these houses, you know, the black ones, they're all like giant houses. Um, let's say blue are, you know, small little houses, but maybe in a really nice neighborhood close to the, uh, let's say that this is the, the city center. So these are all close to each other. Um, and they have similar characteristics. Okay, that's, that's enough. Um, but what, what hedonic pricing is doing is it's sort of looking at, in a way it's looking at matches. So these houses would match, these houses would match. Um, It's finding, it's finding matching houses across the cities, and in the end, we have very similar looking houses with very similar characteristics, but again, the only difference is that here we have high pollution. Let's do nitrous oxide, which is going to lead to um, acid rain. And then we have low nitrous oxide in the air. So in the end, uh, we find the matches. These, you know, the red ones go together, the black ones go together. If it weren't for the difference in pollution, then these houses should be the same. So that one, one the average of the black is going to be 100,000, 100,000. The average of the blue is going to be, <clears throat> let's say, 200,000, 200,000, and then the red, so on and so forth. But 
if we include pollution in the mix, we might... <clears throat> so now these cities are not equal anymore. And for the low levels of pollution, people are going to be willing to pay more uh, to live in a city with less pollution. Or, or maybe it would go the, the opposite way. So maybe in a normal, normal city, people would pay $100,000 for those houses. Oh, that's fine. Let's do it here. But if it's a really low levels of pollution, people will pay more for those houses. And so maybe 250K and 120K instead of 200 and 100. And so essentially, the, the value of the houses is higher because it has a better natural amenity. And what hedonic pricing is doing is looking at this through statistical analysis um, to show... Uh, Yeah, uh, looking at this through statistical analysis to show that value. And when you have enough houses um, across a large enough sample, then you can start to find average effects. And what's going to happen is, again, you can start to get this idea of a demand curve where <clears throat> you have low, this is pollution, low levels of pollution, and this is the house price. At a low level of pollution, the average house price is going to be quite high. So let's say 250 in these towns that we're looking at. And with high levels of pollution, the house price is the average house price will be quite low. Actually, these numbers don't make these numbers are irrelevant. But let's say average of 300 versus an average of 100. For, for high levels of pollution. <clears throat> and so, again, this kind of gives us this idea that we can then aggregate these effects up and assign how much value, how much does society value low levels of pollution? Or how much does society value clean air? And so hedonic pricing is really nice in that sense because it gives you know, statistically robust estimates um, for house prices. So here are just a few examples. I'll just leave those for you to read, but it's common national parks, state parks, um, green belts in cities, and then negative associations with hazardous waste sites, airports, airports and highways from noise pollution, um, and even air pollution. So um, yeah, so hedonic pricing, very common in the academic literature, very common even in practical analysis and policy analysis to try to understand the value of environmental resources. <clears throat> you could use the same thing for something like, instead of using pollution, you could try to look at these, you know, similar idea, but you look at miles of mountain biking trails within a 30 minutes drive. And so if this place has, you know, 100 miles of trails and this place only has 10 miles of trails, then if all of the other characteristics about the house are the same, except one has more mountain bike trails and the other one has less, then this hedonic pricing technique can help us understand what is the value of a trail system. Or what is the value of living close to the beach? Or what is the value of all sorts of other environmental resources? So the trick to doing this type of analysis is collecting... Uh, house, housing price data as well as the characteristics of the housing prices it often involves combining lots of different data sets so you might have to get a separate data set for so a separate data set for the houses number of rooms lot size so on and so forth a separate data set for schools a separate data set for crime a separate data set for the economic opportunities in the area and then a separate data set for pollution levels or a separate data set for um, trail level or trail, you know, trails. So 
in the end, the analysis is actually relatively easy to complete. Um, the next video, I'm going to show you an example of that. But the main trick is assembling a large data set in order to do that. So anyway, those are some of those examples. This just wraps things up. Um, again, talking about stated preferences and revealed preferences, where I would say more mainstream economic analysis favors the revealed preferences because it's based on actual market behavior, whereas the stated preferences allow for possible biases because you're just asking, you're asking questions where there may be incentives or an improperly designed survey may lead to um, poor results. But yeah, that's uh, th those. This chapter had a whole bunch of different ideas about how we think about economic value of natural resources, and then how we actually go about doing that uh, valuation. So all the theory is there, and yeah, in the next last last video on this kind of set of of um, videos, I'm going to actually do and walk you through doing a hedonic price analysis within Microsoft Excel. So, hope you'll join me in that video. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.